Alright guys, Tad Karai back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and so much is going on right now in the competitive Call of Duty scene. Another twist in the tale of this whole CDL comms versus Opta gaming video right now. Of course they talked about it in their podcast yesterday and well, so much entertaining stuff honestly to go through in today's video. It's tough to even put a caption on a lot of this stuff. Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you were new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. Let's do into things then. First of all, wanted to give a bit of a shout out to the CDL firstly before we get into the Optic versus CDL stuff once again. But uh, yesterday for the Astro Gaming listenings, they used to have these like four, uh, they had the player like pictures at the bottom of the screen for really no reason. It looks a little bit cleaner right now, so certainly a step in the right direction. If they continue to show the map vetoes as they have been doing the last couple of times, then uh, well, honestly, the production quality is stepping up time and time again. Thought I'd mention this as well, pretty interestingly from Frosty, this got a few replies from the pros, I mean Gunners especially, please not beg you guys or you are too much. And uh, well, this was the Florida Mutineers, yesterday losing to Seattle Surge. Not a great result for them, not a result that they were looking for, certainly. And Frosty on their team last season in 5 versus 5, now he's kind of in a bit of a limbo situation because he wants to go back to Halo, but there's still some time until Halo Infinite is even released, I believe. I think Frosty was playing for a while on the challenger side, but as he says, put me in coach, right? And Florida certainly need to be having some considerations about what they do to their roster, because Frosty potentially, last season on this team, it was a pretty integral part of their chemistry and how the team was working together, because this time, that's really what seems to be lacking clearly they have the talent but they just can't seem to put it together I mean they throw away maps their search and destroy is pretty woeful despite our awakening in general actually putting up massive numbers and the skies has been pretty lackluster Neptune's been pretty good I think this team certainly has potential but uh, maybe Frosty could be a piece they consider I thought it was funny he just straight up tweets this out but many teams I'm sure thinking about roster changes right now this is well from Glacier yesterday talking about how you know blocking uh, trolls and such on Twitter the amount of trolls that these guys have blocked so I think um, I think uh, Jacob even said actually you can see right here he's blocked almost 1100 accounts on Twitter, so maybe you guys are one of them in the comment section below. And you called me soft, says Clay. I mean, Clay versus Jacob was a bit of a drama back in the day during the whole United stuff that went down in Black Ops 4. I don't get yeah, Certainly, a lot of people looked at these kind of tweets from Clay yesterday and saying, Look, when it's going well for Clay, so he can certainly dish it out on the timeline, but now he gets one bad defeat, and all of a sudden, like, you know, he's blocking everyone or whatever. But then, well, it's entertaining to watch regardless. So, this was the tweet from a few days ago. No shot, you all posted this. This was the one that was deleted. We talked about it in yesterday's video with the whole CDL at comms stuff where they effectively release nine minutes of communication from behind the scenes. And the reason why the Optic guys were very frustrated about this was because, I mean, a lot of the trash talk stuff that they were doing before the games that they would do against anyone was then revealed to the public. And really the concern for Hex was, he talked about in his vlog yesterday and also in this episode right here, we're going to look at a couple of clips off in just a couple of seconds here, the idea that, look, they can't even turn these cameras off. They don't know when they're recording, they don't know when they're not. I mean, the breach of privacy is crazy. It's not, I, I imagined it was just the idea that, okay, like, when the match starts, then like, like that's when the cameras turn on and that's when things can get used. However, they were talking about how in the pre-game and the post-game, even up after their defeat against the subliners, apparently they were using some moments from that as well after their like, you know, post-match communications when they're super frustrated, just taking all of that content and chucking it onto their channel. And they certainly do not believe they should be able to do that. And um, the issues with the cameras being on all the time and the cameras being on all the time is an issue the former is going to go into in quite some detail, graphic detail indeed, in just a couple of seconds here. But this is what Hex and the guys have to say on the map. Matter. Hex especially talking about the fact that look, they're just so desperate for views doing this for Optic versus FaZe as opposed to not necessarily doing it for other matches and well if they actually want to get some decent views in, hire him to well sort out their CDL channel. Yeah it's so uncool by the league to do that by the way we're all mad at the fact that they did that like th like I get this is what happened so now we have to ensure that there's a kill switch to make sure that we have some privacy when we have to have some team comms like where do they get off to think that they could just take... What players yeah. say to hype their teams up behind closed doors should never be released to the public. No. Because now they just forced a rivalry. Yeah. For that, no... Like, for that's no how reason. every team talks before every match. They just... He's ass. He's ass. Yeah. He sucks. Unless they're horrible. I, I think it sounds desperate. I think it sounds thirsty for views. Yeah. Like, I, look, if you guys want the main channel to be popping off, holler at me. Okay, I'll fix it for you. We don't need to do all these underhanded. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I, I reached out to the league. Obviously, immediately, it said like it, it said four minutes. Yeah, I, I did it. I watched four minutes of it. I was like, this is uncalled for. This is out of line. I mean, at this point, you guys should be able to leave the call and then join right before the game starts, so you guys can yeah. just talk. Now, the other part of this, which just blowing up on Twitter last night, was this. So, I mean, there was a 40 second. Oh my God, Formal's facing this. 40 second clip right here. Hitch card absolutely taken it. It just happened after they were talking about the cameras. The whole idea that last year, I mean, they had the integrity 
cameras. The idea with the integrity cams is not just to record the comms as they've kind of been doing this uh, optic have been kind of frustrated about, but also like that, okay, it watches your PS4, it watches, I think, maybe even your like network router and stuff like this so that you're not doing anything dodgy. And I think there's like one of your controller as well. So you can see, so like that the lead can see in theory that you're not using like a Cronus Max or a Cronus Zen actually was the device that we were talking about a little bit last season. You also can't use like, um, you know, you can't use cheats or anything, otherwise they would see it on your monitor through these integrity cams as they're being described. And that Formal had a bit of a moment with the integrity cams and well, who knows if there was anyone on the other side of it. So last year, um, one time uh, when I was in Cali, this is a true story. I was, um, we, we just finished a, like a day where we played or something and like my camera was like set up to where like the competitive integrity camera or whatever, you know what I'm talking about? So like it was like next to my setup, so I didn't really notice it. So later that night, I'm beating my <laughs> and um, and I'm like, I don't no. realize it. No, just listen. So I don't realize it until like Your I'm getting towards was... you know the final chapter of my session. Right. And then I look at the camera, and then it was blue. No, it was still white. And then I was thinking to myself like, could he be watching? And then I just finished. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I just looked at the camera and <laughs> yeah, then, I, then I looked at the camera and I was just like. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Hope you enjoyed the show," and just closed it and went to bed. That's a true story. That'll be no, up on Twitter. I swear to God, that's a true story. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Sorry, that's all I could think about when you guys are talking. Okay, I can imagine. For the, for yeah, the anyways, record. but yeah, it's so whack they posted that. <laughs> For the record, so as he says right there, getting exposed, I'm just trying to provide content. Mal says, mad respect for the lip bite, unless a man would have failed to finish, you are a closer. I've no idea what the thumbnail's gonna be for this video. It's gonna be pretty upsetting to make, I am very sure. As Grote says as well, formal fans, I have the perfect job for you. Referee, Call of Duty League temporary at Blizzard Entertainment if you wanna get involved. And at this as well, I mean, when I saw this last night, I just thought it was great. Access like never before. So of course, this is exactly the tweet they did for the CDL comms. If you guys haven't realized already, this is with the Tech Rev Academy they changed all their branding to make it look like it's the Call of Duty League. Go inside Formal's room for the epic session from a stage one Astro Gaming. Exactly how the tweet was. Um, yeah, just absolutely phenomenal entertainment on the timeline last night. And as Formal says yesterday, so maybe even more stories on the horizon. Can't wait to tell this story about Brandon, that being Dashy, of course, and where we just found his apartment key. That was truly mind blowing. So, uh, yeah, certainly ready for this one when it does arrive. But also, a few interesting things that went on yesterday as well outside of this. This you guys might have heard of the fact that Activision Blizzard laid up 190 people just a couple of days ago and it's CEO, I'm not sure if he's actually received, this is Bobby Kotick over at Activision Blizzard not sure if the CEO has actually received this $200 million bonus yet but um, pretty outrageous to me, the fact they're laying off a load of employees and I think like 50 from the esports division and then the CEO is just getting a 200 mil bonus, like he already makes 30 mil a year I think annual pay based on his, uh, his like base salary and then bonuses on top of that, but 200 mil is, uh, I don't know, like it seems kind of crazy to me and as uh, Dan Price Seattle says here Activision Blizzard could have given 1 million to every employee it laid off and still given its CEO a raise but uh, instead it gave all 200 mil to the CEO and to, well Crim6 then uh, quote tweets this which is why we were looking at that tweet and says you know it says the following as you can see on screen right here Crone predicts it's going to get deleted indeed it does but um yeah I, I wonder exactly what was going on here right like is Crim6 uh, well fearing a potential fine is a potential fine going to happen as, as a result of this I would not be surprised if that is the case but uh, yeah I think he tweeted out after like okay the tweet just wasn't funny enough we're going to delete it but maybe someone from the CDL or maybe one of his teammates or Ram Array or something said, okay, hang on a second, maybe we shouldn't be tweeting this, or uh, the CDL are going to come down your next. But uh, yeah, pretty entertaining stuff regardless. This also happened yesterday, so there was a load of drama yesterday, really, in the uh, the amateur, to the challenger scene, to be honest, between the Europeans and the, the North American challengers players. We'll probably go through that drama in a couple of days' time, because there was a lot said, and it's, it's tough to get through it all in just a single video. But this was very interesting from Parasite yesterday on the podcast. A little clip here where he's talking about Waskin, right? And the idea that, okay, Waskin right now, having failed to get into the league this season just about, supposedly he was maybe potentially going to get onto Paris. And Parasite's talking from the perspective of being on London last season and saying the idea that, look, Scrubs and Waskin weren't picked up, not because of skill by any means, it was factors outside of the game. And um, he was also talking about the fact that Waskin this year is not really playing in the challenger side. He's just been streaming and doing all that kind of stuff and, uh, well, having great success doing it. But at the 
same time, I definitely see Parasite's point that if you're a guy like Ruskin right now and you're not competing in challenges, like, you know, teams and organizations aren't necessarily going to be looking at you, right? Like during hardships, as Parasite is talking about, are you still grinding and going for it or are you not going down that route? But Ruskin kind of fires back at this. He doesn't understand what EU challenges is like. You know, don't worry about me. I'm just going to play. I still shoot my gun at like it was champs yesterday. We deal with hackers all the time, talking about some hackers in the challenger scene, which of course is the same thing in North America as well. I've certainly seen clips of that so far this season. Listen, man, if you, I think you're a beast, but if B-Sport Josh, right, so he was coaching Paris Legion last season, could go back to competing, and B-Sport Josh is actually winning some events in the challenger scene, to fair play to him, and doing well in challenges, you had no excuse. Compete if that is what you intended to do. I didn't even get a good enough offer to compete in challenges, which is kind of strange to me. Like, surely you, you can form some sort of team in challenges, right, as opposed to just getting an offer. Like, as Paris that says, make your own opportunities. Just because I'm trying to grow a brand doesn't mean I can't play COD again, bro, relax. I'll show you when the new one drops. I respect your opinion. I believe in you, man. Fully believe you can do it. So definitely an interesting thing to be discussed. But I think Parasite probably does have a fair point. If I'm a general manager and I'm seeing, okay, Waskin's doing the streaming stuff, which is, of course, fantastic for his brand. But um, at the end of the day, if he's not necessarily showing that he can still compete at the highest level in the challenger side, then um, yeah, am I necessarily going to trust him to come into a lineup once again when there could even be a main AR of the caliber of methods or something sitting on the bench still at the end of this season. So let's go on briefly to discuss the matches for tonight. This uh, exchanges his profile picture right here. I mean, just absolutely unbelievable stuff. I don't know what's going on with the COD scene anymore. Formal is completely off the leash right now. And as well, COD League say day one is a wrap. We'll be back tomorrow for more action from the Toronto home series. These are the two games tonight. And so you guys may have noticed if you're in the UK or I think maybe the rest of Europe right now, it always catches me off guard every year that the daylight savings times change differently. So our clocks only go forward one hour in like, I think it's the 28th of March. So for these next two weeks, we actually, uh, it's only four hours difference between Eastern and uh, GMT. And uh, therefore these matches are actually at a pretty damn nice time for us. So fair play to all involved. I wouldn't mind if that was just a permanent thing. Unfortunately, the clocks will go forward regardless. But two matches today, LA Thieves versus Ultra. I think uh, just to mention that real quick, because a couple of guys were mentioning to me last night, the fact that I get why the match is starting so early. It's actually because our clocks haven't changed as opposed to, you know, something being changing with the actual schedule. It'll go back to the 8 p.m. start for the last guys in the UK in a, well, a couple of weeks time. But uh, well, these are the games tonight. LA Thieves versus Ultra, Legion versus Rocker. These are big games, right? Every game right now has, has a lot of impact right here. And Ultra with their new team with insight in the squad. LA Thieves, I mean, surely that, you know, I think they beat Toronto last time they played them. So I think it was actually a 3-0 at the major or something. So I, I definitely think they could do it. With this insight move though, there might be some sort of honeymoon period that comes in with Ultra right here. And I think Thieves, okay, I'm probably going to give them like a 60% favorites in this, but I don't think it's clear cut by any means. I certainly think that Toronto can, well, manage to find a way to win this series. And if they do that, that's not looking good for Thieves, especially given how good the rest of their group is looking right now. I mean, with FaZe just looking completely dominant, it's going to be it's going to be relatively tough for Thieves to actually get out in the winner's bracket if they if they end up losing this series. And then on the other side of things, you've got Legion versus Rocker, right? This really needs to be a bounce back series for Minnesota because this group is so tough. I mean, Paris is certainly a tough team to get through. And Minnesota have not looked good so far this season. I think that Paris actually should certainly be favoured in the hard points here. They're very good in hard point, actually, Paris Legion. I think they're six in three, excluding maps that aren't crossroads. So I honestly think Legion should be favoured in this series might take him in something like a 3-1 and well that puts Minnesota in a very tough spot indeed but in tweet your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section but I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video it really helps out the YouTube algorithm and know you enjoyed this content other people like you may enjoy this content as well and I'm going to the competitive Call of Duty community thank you for watching as always take care and I will see you next time